Uh, first, you know, I'd actually like to ask you something. Okay, now you, you've, you've, you know, a uh, wonderful presentation and, and you've described, you know, what you saw while you were in, in Gaza. I mean, us sitting on the other side, watching our televisions, like either it was BBC or watching it on NRQ or TV2, you're constantly told that this war was a war on terror because they're trying to fight Hamas. Can you actually explain a little bit more about that? How do you see that, being on the other side? Yeah, that, I mean, that is the, the problem of labeling an organization. I mean, Hamas is obviously a, a political party that the majority of the Palestinians have elected in, in open elections. And, uh, and the label terrorism or terrorist organization is exactly the same as what put on, was put on the PLO, as I said uh, before, uh, the Oslo Agreement. Um, the problem is, of course, that uh, first of all, this is not a war, because in my opinion, a war is between two states. And the people in Gaza, they, like the rest of Palestine, they are occupied, they are under occupation. And actually, Israel has a responsibility for these people since they are the occupant. And they also have the responsibility for them inside Gaza. So, uh, so what they actually use here is military action towards the civilian population to uh, punish them for that they made the wrong choice in election. And of course, the if, if the target was to, uh, if the aim was to destroy Hamas, I'm convinced that if there was an election today in Palestine, even, the Hamas would get an even higher vote than they did in 2006. So this has not uh, uh, at any point uh, weakened Hamas, but it has created a lot of misery for the people, in, uh, for the civilians. I mean, I guess that, I mean, I've been reading the, the Norwegian media and, and both you and uh, Dr. Mats Gilbert have come under attack for being anti-Semitic and pro-Hamas. What's your reply to that? We are, uh, first of all, I'm definitely not anti-Semitic. Uh, I think that uh, if you work for a peaceful solution in uh, Palestine, this is also to create uh, safety for the Jews living in uh, in Israel, and uh, I think that's the only way. Um, uh, what was the other part you asked about? Uh, uh, it was uh, being a uh, uh, pro Hamas. Yes, yeah. uh, I think. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is if I were, if, if you were going to ask people in Palestine if they were pro. Uh, or uh, or uh, Party in Norway. I mean, what I do, I respect the Palestinians and I respect their choices. And that they are in need, I go and help them. And if they have chosen Hamas as their uh, leaders, of course, I will relate to them. It's really not my business to interfere in uh, Palestinian politics. Okay, we have some questions from some of our audience now. And uh, we have a question from Magnus Jürgen. He asked, many observers are saying that a two-state solution is now impossible. How do you see the possibilities for the future and what is realistic long-term scenario? I think still the two-state solution is, uh, is a possibility at the moment. Uh, it's, uh, at least Israel has gone towards uh, extremism and they are probably getting a, a government that do not want a two-state solution. But we don't know this. And, uh, in my opinion, all parties of Palestinians are open for uh, for two-state solution. Nobody, not one Palestinian, not even one Hamas person, has said anything else. This is here also another question: Is Israel has also laid the blame for humanitarian crisis in Gaza on the Egyptians and said that Egypt too has closed its borders? How has that exasperated the situation on the ground in Gaza? Well, Sipi Libni was visiting uh, Egypt uh, just a few days before the attack started, and I think uh, Egypt uh, got uh, got their uh, directions. Uh, so, uh, I mean, to put the blame on everybody else uh, around, of course, it would be... Actually, uh, Egypt opened the border for us. Uh, they have opened for others, uh, but I think Egypt is in a very difficult situation, uh, and of course they have their own interior political problems as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we also have, uh, uh, here's another question, it says here that Jim Gain on uh, for U N R A W A 
head of the spokes uh, head and the spokesman Christopher Guinness is critical. Um, I'm sorry, no, okay, is critical of the Israeli blockade. The UN compounds were clearly marked and their coordinates were given to the Israeli army, but the UN facilities were still hit, yeah. killing many civilians. White phosphorus and other deadly weapons were used. These appear to be war crimes. How should Israel be brought to justice over targeting civilians and using ammunition that is banned to be used mm -hmm. on civilian areas? Well, this is, uh, this is quite correct. Uh, actually, there was, uh, it, it's been quite, quite clear that the UN uh, targets were uh, uh, UN buildings and UN cars were targets uh, by Israel. And as I said before, uh, when I when I started the lecture, um, for the Palestinians, the help through UN is very important when the bilateral help is stopped. So therefore, for the for Israel, for example, to bomb the 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 storage, the main UN storage. That's really, and then at the same time closing the borders, they are really trying to starve people. The Friday, the, the, 11th, the 9th of, uh, of uh, January, actually UN cancelled all their transportations and all their work in, in Gaza as a demonstration towards Israel because the cars and the buildings were attacked. So, uh, so this is definitely uh, an attack on the international community. When you talk about legal uh, process, I, this is not my field, but I think it's uh, the way I know it is that to go to make legal action towards Israel as a state is very, very difficult. There are no laws, international laws, that opens for this, particularly as Israel has not condoned the majority of the of the international agreements concerning the Geneva Conventions and human rights. But what could be done is to actually uh, make legal action against subjects. If you can identify the person firing the bomb or the officer giving the order, this person can be prosecuted. This is... Uh, this, we have had even lawsuits like that here in Norway recently from the Balkans. Um. Is my question here that is there is UN peacekeeping in Sudan? Why not in Gaza? UN peacekeeping? There was no peacekeeping. Uh, UN, as I said, were targeted, and there were no uh, international community had no uh, no way of interfering in the uh, in the area. They could, of course, protest more against being not allowed in. I think it was extremely. Uh, this is extremely serious that no journalists were allowed in. Um, so I think, uh, in my opinion, I feel that uh, Europe and uh, the West at least, uh, and also a lot of Arab states, they bear responsibility for maybe not fighting hard enough to let stop this from happening. But in the end, it's Israel's responsibility. They cannot put the blame on Egypt or anybody else. They have closed the border, they have attacked the people, and they have staged this. Mm. Um, these are uh, questions that just, you know, <laughs> we're being bombarded with questions here. Is Why does Hamas not recognize Israel? I think, uh, well, this is, uh, you know, in the Mecca Accords uh, leading up to coalition government in the spring of 2007, they actually acknowledged the border, so 2000, from 1967. But on the other hand, why should you ask people that are living under occupation? This is like asking the resistance movement in Norway during the war in the 40s about renouncing their right to fight for liberation of their own country. I mean, these types of demands you can put to a government of a country. So once they have the Palestinian state, uh, state then of course they have to ab abide by international agreements. But to ask for the agreements before you actually have given them anything, I think this is... Uh, and the Palestinians have learned through the Oslo Agreement, because that's exactly what happened. They were, they were demanded to give Israel secure borders and at the same time they got no binding obligations from Israel at all. So they will not do this again. Thank you. I think that because of our limited time,